Autumn, congratulations on this fantastic film that is Emma. It's your directorial debut, which, how's it been? What's the experience been like? It must have been a whirlwind. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I, it, it was super exciting. I, I pitched on the film and got it, and then it was like, okay, you got the film. Can you go fly to Anya Taylor-Joy in New York and and uh, and secure her for the role? I was like, yes, I can. I was like, I've been waiting for this my whole life. I will do whatever you say. I'm going. So, you know, it was a whirlwind beginning. And, and you know, so, so many people have films that never come out or, you know, the, the financing falls through. I myself had, had was about to make a film years ago and uh, the financing fell through 10 days before. So to have a movie go with such gusto um, and feel like it didn't stop was thrilling to me. You know, it is exhausting and it, it truly is a marathon. Um, and I almost thought it was going to kill me at one point, but that's so exciting. <laughs> Thankfully yeah. it hasn't. Um, no. Why choose Emma as your first film? It's, it's not an easy film or no. book to choose to adapt so you'll have most of the United Kingdom to answer for if it didn't go right so yeah. right well I love a complicated lady and Emma certainly is um, uh, but uh, honestly but, you know I was asked to pitch on it so so uh, when I got the call I, I did think oh my god this is like the this is the first movie I would like to make but you know I w it uh, it wasn't my idea which is kind of cool felt like a great blessing um, and I did a lot of research and went deep down into the rabbit hole. Um, I, my mother's English, so, um, so growing up in Los Angeles, I, I think I probably had an unnatural obsession with Great Britain and, um, and all it held, um, to television movies, period films, uh, art history, fashion, you know, uh, music. Um, so, um, so it did feed into my sort of natural obsession, obsessive youth. You know, and uh, but yeah, uh, I love I do love a great challenge. Mm, well, your style and your fashion doesn't go amiss. Um, what was it like working on this film and in terms of taking what you learned from your music videos and uh, all of your work before and putting it into this? You must have been in, in your element. I was. I studied ballet for 14 years and I went to drama school. And then, as you know, I was a rock photographer for a long time. And all of those things had always helped me in rock photography and those things and rock photography and my experience working with musicians in the studio and on tour and just observing, you know, human behavior um, uh, of men and women in, in, in romantic crisis, um, you know, this never goes away for anyone. So I brought all of that into making the film. But, you know, I'm so grateful to the sort of genius, you know, uh, I, I'm so grateful to the genius musicians that I worked with and was given the opportunity to observe at work in the studio because it really did help uh, me come to this movie with very distinct musical ideas. And and when you do that from the beginning, I think you have the advantage of it being another character in the film. And um, and and in and with that I found Isabel Waller Bridge, who's just was such a natural musical comedian and and uh, and a very talented composer, you know. So it was kind of a perfect match. Yeah. In terms of how you filmed it, now there's uh, something that kept drawing my attention was the focus on facial expressions and eyes. And oh, good. I've, I've never known <laughs> I've never known a film to have eyes and facial expressions sort of tell a thousand words <laughs> without the use of dialogue. Was that an intention to yes. have facial expressions sort of carry the narrative in that way? You make me so happy saying that. <laughs> um, yes, and in fact, from the beginning, this was part of the plan. Was uh, so. You know, when I was speaking to Johnny Flynn about, you know, a scene with Mr. Knightley, uh, once we finished the sort of essentials of that, of that scene, I often s went through a series of looks. I was like, look at Emma like you hate her. Look at Emma like you want her. Look at Emma like you didn't mean to look at her, and then she caught you looking. And then I would do the same with Anya. You know, Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, so magnificent and, you know, has a photographic memory for um, her physical behavior as well as her emotional place as an actor in each scene. And so Emma is a very complex, difficult, unlikable person at times. And I needed the looks to support that. And, and I think when you're poking fun at, um, at the passive aggressive behavior that England is famous for. Um, I, you can have a lot of fun with that and it's so, and all of it is based on looks. And, and um, we had this wonderful script written by Eleanor Catton and then we wrote another two or three stories going on between each character. And um, it was so fun because the actors eventually started in 
these large group scenes where I couldn't quite keep track of what everyone was doing, you know, Amber Anderson would come up to me and she said, I snuck a look at Frank Churchill. And Frank Churchill would say, I snuck a look at <laughs> Jane Fairfax, you know, and, and, and Emma was said, I gave a dirty look to Mr. Knightley. And then, he, and now I gave him a look like I loved him, you know. And so by the time we were doing the ball, there was this catalog of looks and secret desires that was being um, archived. And my editor, um, Nick Emerson, kept a folder um, as we went through editing the film of, you know, looks of wanting and looks of loathing and, you know, and, and it made for really fun um, explorations into the sort of, um, you know, what's really going on in the scene for each character. It was really fascinating to see that dance between the camera, your direction and the acting. So really look forward to seeing more. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Yeah.